hi guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is faith i am a homeschooling mom to four and we are a new full-time rv family and so actually that's what i'm going to be covering today is kind of just answering some questions that have come up because we've made this announcement that we sold our house like 90% of all of our belongings and possessions and we moved from like 2,500 square feet down to 450 square feet. If you wanna see that announcement, I have a YouTube video where I made the announcement and also the last video that I just made was actually giving you a tour of our new house on wheels. But today I'm actually just answering some questions that have come up. So I have, I wrote them down and I'm just gonna kind of run through them to try and answer the most common questions that I got from people um, that were just curious about this life change that we've made. The first one that we heard the most and got asked the most was how we were gonna make it work financially and how we were gonna make money. So my husband is an RN and we are going to be giving a whirl of this idea of travel nursing. So about, um, all over the United States, there are hospitals that have needs to be filled, whether people um, are on maternity leave or are having surgery or they're just plain out short staffed, they have needs that can be filled by nurses. So um, these assignments last anywhere from like eight to 13 weeks. And so while ideally we would like to have the freedom to travel wherever, whenever, when we want to, we won't exactly have the freedom to just like pick up and move every week or two, like we might have originally hoped to. But, you know, we're hoping that maybe the Lord will place something in our path. Maybe it would be a complete different career change or just a change in general, just to something um, that would give us a little bit more freedom. But you know what, we just are trusting the Lord um, to guide us this way. And so this is what we are doing right now. He is going to be traveling as a travel nurse. And so our assignments will usually run between two to three months and we'll be stationed at a location for that period. And we really hope to sightsee or in that general area for that time. And then in between each of the assignments, we hope to have a month or two off that will grant us the freedom to travel anywhere we want in between those assignments. So that's where we're hoping to knock out the different places that maybe we won't wanna be stationed there uh, for two to three months, but we would like to go sightsee and travel. So we'll hit those on the times when he is not currently in a travel nursing assignment. All right, another question we got was, what if you don't like it? And that's a completely valid question and one that we have asked ourselves before. Um, so what if we don't like it? Well, we'll just say, you know what, we gave it a try. And you know, if we're in it for a year and we're like, you know, this really isn't for us, then we'll find a new place, find a new house, settle down buy the things that we got rid of already and just start over. Like there's no harm, no foul here because we can, we can always get those things back. They're just things. It's just stuff. And most of the things that we got rid of, we didn't really have any sentimental tie to. So we'll just start over and we'll just call it a really fun adventure, something that we may never do again, but at least we tried. Another question that we got was, how are you going to possibly live in something so small? You have four kids. That is a really small amount of space. And it really is. Um, Joel likes to say it's a really big camper, but it's a really small house, which is very, very true, especially when you get that many people in here. Now, the thing to remember is that we are really trying to be sun chasers meaning we don't want to be anywhere where it's going to be really cold or snowy or, you know, for long periods of time. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll always be in places that have perfect weather. We know that there's going to be rainstorms and there's going to be crazy things that happen. But by and large, we hope to be in places that are, it's going to be warm enough where our kids can be outside. So we hope to take advantage of all of the local parks and the campgrounds that have lots of things to do for the kids. So really when you open it up and the kids go outside, then your, you know, your square footage really doesn't matter because we hope to be spending a lot of our time outside. Now, the thing about even when we lived in our sticks and bricks house, we had 2,500 square foot, but it didn't matter where I was. 
my kids found me. So if I was upstairs, the kids found me upstairs. If I was in the basement, they found me there. When we would sit down and watch something on TV um, late at night, we had a huge sectional couch. It didn't matter that we had literally enough places for probably 12 people to sit comfortably on our couch. When we all six sat on the couch, we would sit on an area that probably was meant for two to three people. They're on our laps, they're, you know, snuggled in between us. So that aspect of it is that, you know, our kids always found us. We were always together a lot anyway. So this is just not going to be that much different. Another question we got was, what will we do for internet? So that is one we are still trying to figure out. We obviously will be having um, our unlimited data plans on our phones, but we do need a, to do a little bit of research to find some sort of mobile hotspot that can come along with us that will give us a little bit more coverage and a little bit more flexibility with like our, um, you know, computers and iPads and Apple TV and things like that. So, um, hey, if anyone has any recommendations, pass them our way. Um, we definitely are still researching this, so I don't have a definite answer on this one. So how are we going to receive our mail? So, you know, we really don't have a lot of hard copy mail these days. We don't have a mortgage or a lot of bills or anything that we're going to have to be paying that are going to come in the mail to us. And anything that we do need to have to us, like our bank account statements and things like that, they're all electronic and we've made them that way. If there happens to be anything that will come in a hard copy, our um, home address is changed to my parents' address. And so they, they will be willingly participating as our, you know, mail opener to see if it's just junk mail or letting us know if there happened to be anything that showed up um, in hard copy form that we might need to be aware of. So I do know that there are mailing services available that you can get that will, you know, routinely compile all of your mail and send it to you. But we really just don't have a lot of mail that we're going to need to have physically with us um, on a routine basis. Now, the other question to that was Amazon packages. We do lot of Amazon packages. We have them, a lot of them delivered. So how are we going to get those? So a lot of campgrounds will allow you to have those things shipped to where you are. Now this is something that you would want to check with your individual campground and the front desk and make sure that they're okay accepting Amazon packages. But if they are not, you can always do an Amazon locker. And so you can have it shipped to a, an area where it might be close to you, have it, um, they'll kind of let you know when it's there, you have a code, you can go and pick it up and get whatever you needed from your Amazon locker. So there are ways around it when you don't have a six and bricks address to be able to get those Amazon packages, which I know was a very common question and very people are very curious about this for us too, because we do a lot of Amazon shopping. Another question we got was, where are we most excited to visit? And a lot of times when I'm answering this question, I just say everywhere because there are really not a lot of places that I would not go or don't want to go and visit and see. Now, if I have to get specific, there are some specific places and it kind of depends on who you ask in the family. We have people who are really excited. They really want to go to Alaska. We have people who really want to go to Arizona, Utah, see like the mighty five um, of the national parks. There are, there's just so much to do out in Arizona and Utah. We're really excited for that one. We also want to go to Glacier, to Yellowstone, to Tetons, you know, especially just a lot of those big national parks that are out west, um, really looking forward to those. But like I said, there's just not a lot that we wouldn't be willing to go and to see. So the next thing that we have are what are the kids thinking about this whole process and how are they handling it? And it kind of comes and goes. So sometimes they're super excited. They can't believe that we're doing it. They're thinking of all the great places that we're going to get to see. And then on the flip side, they're, you know, still kind of mourning what they're losing. They are losing their friends and their co-ops and the normal, you know, routine that we have developed over the last five years of living in our house. You know, when we were taking down all the pictures and shelves of all of their things on the walls, they kind of had a, a rough go at that because it was really becoming um, real for them. 
And so that was hard. Saying goodbye to their friends was hard. We've just been kind of reminding them that we hope that wherever we go, um, that our friends will, you know, that we can, that they will come and visit us. And that too, we plan to make routine stops back to our home state, home cities, and visit our family and our friends. So we don't want it to be like we're, we're leaving at this point and we're not going to come back for three years. It's not really going to be like that. We do have um, plans to work in trips back home to, to make it back to our family and our friends and see all of the people that, you know, are important to us. This kind of also raised the question of, you know, like, what are you doing for all the kids' extracurricular activities? So, um, our kids, prior to everything crazy with COVID, they did play sports pretty routinely and obvious. And honestly, this kind of played into this whole idea where I, I mentioned in one of my previous videos about this idea of reclaiming family. And we have kind of pulled back the reins on, on sports anyway. Um, we just found that our families were going, or our family was going in totally different directions. You know, Joel would go one way with two kids. I would go another way with two kids. We had sports almost every night of the week. And it was just honestly not something that we really wanted to spend our family time doing every night of the week, um, being separated. So sports really hasn't been a big factor in our, fam in our family. Like we love sports and they love to play, but a lot of times that's spent with like wiffle ball and baseball and soccer in the backyard and we're playing as a family rather than on a true sports team. The other thing is um, the piano lessons that Gabriel takes. We are currently working with his piano teacher to come up with a solution for something that we can do on the road, whether that is doing, you know, like um, FaceTime slash Zoom lessons or we are going, you know, if we're in a place where we don't have very good internet or access to it that maybe we video him playing the assigned songs, send them to him, and during his, you know, lesson time, he would review those songs and then kind of send a video back or instruction on how to do something different. You know, it's still figuring these things out. We hope to be able to continue those because he is, he loves playing the piano and, and quite frankly, he's pretty good at it. So we would like to be able to continue that, but it's just something that we need to work out and kind of figure out as we go. So one of the other questions I got was, where am I going to report for homeschool? So we are making our permanent address my parents' address. And so therefore, we're actually going to be sending our letter of intent for homeschooling to the school district that um, my husband and I actually graduated from. So it'll actually be kind of funny um, <laughs> to send that to our um, alma mater. And that kind of leads me into another question is how is this going to change our homeschool? So one of the things that I have really, I've really had like this 180 change in the way that I homeschool. And I hope to make a future video kind of explaining like how I started and how I've gotten to this point um, in our just homeschool journey um, because it really has taken this huge change. And um I'll just give you a little brief of kind of like where we're going in the sense that I really want to make where we are be a much play a much bigger role in how we're going to be homeschooling. So if we're in an area where there are lots of things historically um, to visit sites and, you know, um, museums and all of those things, I want that to be a key factor in what we're learning. So if we had a curriculum that was really following this way, but all of a sudden we're in an area that can talk and attest to like real life events and be able to go to these places, I want that to be the focus rather than a, a workbook or a worksheet or something that is, you know, not a true experience. So I want where we are to really impact what and how we're studying it. And that kind of lends to, you know, if my kids, if we're in an area and my kids are really, you know, if we happen to be stationed near the beach and we go to the beach a lot and all of a sudden we're finding all of these seashells and sea creatures, you know, what a perfect time to have an ocean study and to study the ocean and to do things that are about that. If we're in the mountains and, you know, we're seeing a totally different area of the United States, why don't we study that geographical location, the animals that are in that area? You know, if we're near a volcano, you know, if you happen to be near Mount St. Helens, like then let's study Mount St. Helens. Let's do the history of it. Let's look into volcanoes. 
that kind of thing. Like I really want where we are to influence what we study and how we study it. Also kind of lending itself to more of an unschooler approach, meaning you're not necessarily, not that you're not doing anything for school, but you're really letting your child dictate what you're studying and it's their interest that is leading you to what they study. You know, there's so many, you know, studies that show that when a kid is truly interested in what they're studying and they retain it so much better because they have a vested interest in it. So if at any point my kids really are drawn to something, I really want that to really kind of lead us in how we're doing our school. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I could go on and on about that, but I'm going to move on to the next question. All right. Another question that we had was, what did we do with all of our stuff? Well, we donated a ton. We had some stuff that just, it, it needed to go. We sold a lot of stuff. We had, we kept like zero of our furniture, all of the big things, it's all gone. And then, um, a lot of it, we are going to be moving it into here. Obviously we still need some things for our kitchen. We still need our clothes and shoes. We just really did have to downsize. You couldn't bring all of your shoes and all of your clothes. So what we didn't want, we either tried to sell on a yard sale or community before we moved, had a community yard sale. And we just threw everything out that we possibly could and it was kind of like make an offer we need it gone got rid of a ton of stuff that way what didn't sell we took and we donated it but we do I mean we did have to keep a lot of the things to actually furnish this as far as all of our kitchen stuff and you know all of our pillows and blankets and clothing and you know all of that stuff is is coming with us that we didn't downsize now um we did, you guys have known, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I love books and I have quite a collection of books. And books weigh a lot and you are limited on how much weight you can put into a rig like this and pull it down the road. So all the books don't get to come. I do have to be very choosy with the ones that we're going to bring with us as far as our homeschool curriculum that we're going to continue and the books that come with us. So what did I do with all of my books? My parents so generously offered to let me put my bookshelf up in my childhood room. So I have my big, huge Ikea bookshelf that's full of all of our books, which will give us an opportunity that when we're gone, I'm going to grab which books that I think that we can get through, which might pertain to what we might be studying or where we are. And every time we come back, for, you know, a visit or to be back in our home state, I'm going to swap those out and get a new set and we'll constantly be changing these in and out. So they, yes, they are storing my homeschool books and um, just the few records that we have as far as just, we do keep some of our records for our homeschooling purposes. So if someone were ever come and be like, I need to see what you have for um, you know, Gabriel at such and such a grade. I do, I'm kind of particular about keeping that. I probably don't need to keep it all, but I just, you never know. And so I keep some of that stuff just to make sure that I have some documentation that we are taking our homeschool seriously. Now, one question that my husband gets a lot because he's going to be pulling this mammoth down the road is, do you need a CDL? And it's kind of funny because no, you don't. And there are times that I think you might need to, or maybe you should, but at this current juncture, you don't need a CDL to pull this guy down the road. Another question is how long do you plan to do it? And we don't know. We might do it a year and be like, yeah, that was fun. That's enough. We might do it two years and, you know, be like, okay, it's time to, you know, settle back down, have a sticks and bricks, a permanent location, a little bit more room. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that when they start out and they're, it's, it, they have that mentality, I'm only going to do this for a year or two. And they're on their eighth year and they're like, I don't ever have any plans to stop. So, we are completely open. We'll do whatever the Lord leads us to do. If it's only a year, then it's only a year. If it's seven, then it's seven. So we really just don't have any idea right now. Another question is how will the kids be involved or will they? And yes, we have seen lots of people that create, you know, your checklist as far as, you know, things when you're moving the site. And so I'm sure that there will be some things, you know, you have to do things inside the campers, things outside the camper, and it might be, you know, giving them something to be involved in. But just like they had their chores at their home, they will have chores here as well. It's just going to be blessing that there's a lot less square footage to keep track of. Another question that we got was, what about the doctor visits, the eye doctor, the dentist? 
So I've mentioned previously that we plan to make stops back to our home state. So during these trips back, we just plan to put all of those all in like a couple of days as best as we can to like knock them all out. So when we're back, we'll just see how many we can get scheduled. And if we can't, then we'll wait until the next time. But we do plan to keep all of the same positions, I you know, and keep all of those people the same and then just hit them when we get back. And the last question we have was, do you have a name for your rig? And we don't. So that's what I'm gonna call on everyone else. I need everyone else to brainstorm. What can we call this thing? You know, we need something creative, something good. So for all of you viewers, if you have any good recommendations, we need a name for this guy. So um, give me your best, uh, give me your best names. We've got, it needs a name, right? So yeah, let me know what you guys think. All right, if you guys have any other questions, um, as always, drop them below. I would love to answer them. And until next time, guys, have a blessed day.